gentlemen, to end tonight's show, I present upon you one of the greatest anomalies to ever happen in the history of Kill Tony. This guy is the first person to take the stage at my shows, and he does so to a standing ovation, and he leaves on a standing ovation. A man who has done more new minutes on this show than anyone ever has. This man is the longest standing regular in the history of the show, more appearances than anyone else ever. The regular that has done more new minutes than anybody ever in the show's history. Everywhere he goes, he absolutely destroys. He's selling out everywhere. He's making $60,000 a month on Cameo. Some people call him the Memphis Strangler. Some people call him the Vanilla Gorilla. Some people call him the Big Red Machine. The Vanilla Gorilla, the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine. This is William Lights Out Montgomery. Apparently, three rappers were found dead in the basement of a Michigan apartment building. Okay, that's it. I'm not letting my son become a rapper. Holy sh... <laughs> I don't know if y'all have heard of this Brian Laundry guy, but I've got a laundry list of reasons why your daughter shouldn't go out with him. <laughs> a 319 million year old brain was discovered in England. I had no idea Biden had been traveling in the UK. <laughs> what the fuck was that? God damn it! <laughs> and just right off the bat, anybody in the front row, I'm sorry, I have COVID right now. So. <laughs> For President's Day this year, I am going as Grover Cleveland. And Tony, I actually went to a Chinese restaurant and got a couple fortune cookies, so I thought I would just maybe open up a couple and see just what was on the fortune cookies. Let's see. <laughs> Red Band's so old, he only listens to porn on AM radio. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Let's see what this one. Red Band's so lame, he only eats gluten-free fortune cookies. Holy <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that. Uh, that's all I have. The Big Red Fellow himself. The Big Red Fellow. <laughs> You're rocking a Kirkland Signature sweatshirt today. We've heard about this on-again, off-again relationship. New sponsorship deal. 7.5 million next three months. <laughs> Kirkland signature. I don't give a fuck anymore! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you don't give a fuck about what? I don't know. I've had this horrible brain fog, Tony, <laughs> after being off the nicotine. Holy shit. <laughs> Tony, I don't know if you saw it. I was actually also on a Super Bowl commercial last night. I don't know why anybody's talking about it. I was on the Pringles commercial last night. You were? What did you do? I said, once you pop, you don't stop. <laughs> Seriously, I was like the lead role in it. It was giant. Yeah, I was on the Pringles commercial. It's like I woke up, everybody's talking about David on that fucking planners thing. His ass wasn't even fucking on it. David motherfucking Lucas. Another great minute, fresh off of a goddamn Super Bowl commercial. How yeah. cool is that? And I'm the one saying the line, once you pop, you don't stop for the fucking Pringles commercial. And it's like nobody's fucking talking about it. It's the biggest thing that's literally ever fucking happened to me, and it's like nobody even mentions it. They all talk about fucking David, and he didn't even say shit in his fucking commercial. Plant his penis. I hate you wasn't there. You could have stuck one up your ass. We had no idea. That is incredible. How much did you get paid to do the Pringles commercial? Four million. Wow, four Yeah, yeah. Dollars. That is... Once you pop, you don't stop. <laughs> Once you pop, you don't stop. That's so interesting that they would have you say it like that. It sort of sounds like... Once, once you pop, you don't stop. Wow, that is incredible. Did they tell you to do it like that? Yeah, it was really weird. The guy got me into his, into his office, and was yeah, like, he was like, you need to talk like a black person for this. I was like, are you sure I'm not black? Like, this seems weird. It's a Pringles commercial on fucking the Super Bowl. And he just kept on insisting, and yeah, so I did Once you pop, you don't stop. D-Madness like says that they don't talk like that. You are in big trouble. What, blind, blind people? No. What's 
No. The fuck are you talking about? I was on a fucking Pringles commercial, you piece of shit. <laughs> Nobody fucking help him get off the stage tonight. Oh my god. Good luck finding the stairs. I was on a fucking Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> D Madness says he never saw your commercial. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> God, where the fuck am I right now? God, am I in the fucking twilight? So this literally was the biggest opportunity of my life. Oh, shit. Thank you, and I was kidding. I've been kidding. We're both kidding. Okay. Good. I'll sit back down, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll be honest, Tony. I didn't even want to leave my apartment tonight. You what? Hold on, excuse me, what? Oh, D Madness you know, says. That's a very interesting uh, story you just told. Just... Once you pop, you don't stop. <laughs> Are you not feeling good? For real? Yeah, I'm not feeling good. And I ate the same mushrooms as Uncle Laser did. God, what happened with this fucking set? <laughs> Look, I'm trying to get canceled. Well, you have to have a career first. Whoa, relax. You actually have to. You're putting the. But uh, my Instagram account alone has more than the Kill Tony fucking Instagram account. How does that make you feel? This is, it's a show, Uncle Laser. What, how, many, how many followers does your show Instagram account have? Because you don't have as many as I have. No, but this is what you your judge shit off of. Your you're first fucking, episode on okay. your podcast didn't have... 37,000 in the first week. Not a fucking chance. I, mean, I stole this from the green room, by the way. That's mine now. His hair is thinning, too. Okay. Very good. Yes. Yeah. So again, Uncle Laser's hair is his identity. So he looks at other men like, what's your hair look like? Okay, I gotcha. Trash ass fucking garbage human. I'm trending, though. Trending up. Okay. This is, if you've ever wondered what it's like if cocaine took an Adderall pill, this is what it's like. <laughs> It was fun to see y'all go after each other. But yeah, I was watching that and I was thinking, tripping by myself on the side there. I was like, fuck, <laughs> what a horrible decision. This, yeah. But it's fun. It's totally fine. <laughs> I've started eating at the Cracker what Barrel again. What are some of your favorite things about the Cracker Barrel? It's always filled with fucking old people. And those are the only kind of types of people I don't fantasize about killing. I've, I swear to God, I, I can just really kind of enjoy what I'm eating. I can enjoy the ambiance. It's... Is there a certain type of people other than old that uh, resides there that you like? Yeah, well, weirdly enough, there's a bunch of fucking blind people that show up at the Cracker Barrel. Second, are you sure they're blind? No, I'm just enraged right now. Oh, I cannot believe. Nice. I'm just trying to keep my composure right now. I swear to God, I was scared to even come here tonight, Tony. I didn't even want to leave my fucking place. Once you pop, you don't stop. <laughs> oh my goodness. What do you order when you go to Cracker Barrel? Grandma's pancake breakfast. Tony, you're working with some sausage, fucking eggs, biscuits, and then you get blueberry fucking pancakes, Tony. Unbelievable. Holy shit, man. I love the blueberry pancakes. <laughs> I can't even stop eating the blueberry pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Moses. Who is this black guy you're impersonating? <laughs> I started listening to a bunch of Ja Rule. Honestly, I've I've been listening to a bunch of Ja Rule. Hello, hello. I met him at the airport two weeks ago in the Nashville airport. I said, Ja, you are a giant inspiration for me. I'm actually in the middle of, of filming a Super Bowl commercial. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm saying, once you pop, you don't stop. But they told me to talk in like a black person voice. And I was like, I've been listening to a bunch of your mixtapes and stuff. You've, you're my inspiration. And I got to say it like that. But then he was like, okay, get the fuck away from me. What I, honestly, I didn't get a picture. But when I he could've... said it, how did, what did it sound like when Ja Rule said that to you? Man, you going to have to stop! <laughs> Man, you got to stop! <laughs> okay. 
That was very DMX-y, no doubt about it. Oh, We're pretty sure you're getting your black rappers confused. I see all this shit about Red Band going to... That's all he posts about. I'm at the dentist with his sunglasses on trying to act all fucking cool. It's not cool, dude. They're pulling your fucking teeth out. You piece of shit. It's not going to matter. You were in the Wayfarers in the picture. Holy shit. They're tearing your teeth out of your skull. For some reason, he thinks being in a dentist chair is, like, awesome or something like that. <laughs> you do. Yeah, it's so stupid, Tommy. <laughs> why, why? You posted today, literally, back at the dentist again. I have been watching your fucking fine ass since he fucking... Whoa, you talking to this here. guy right here? Yeah, look at that guy. Wow. Oh, he's a cutie down there. I like that Abs guy. Whoa, he just gave you the eyebrows. This is Red Man, Stop! <laughs> I wasn't even fucking with <laughs> Tony, I'm excited to announce I've started, I don't know if y'all remember Miss Cleo, but I've started calling Miss, Miss Cleo is back. It's crazy you mention this because I literally just watched a documentary about her. She's dead. Right? Who have I been talking to? <laughs> Wait, no, no, you're kidding, right? No, she's dead as shit. No, dude. you're kidding, right? Wait, hold on. I'm still trying to get over the fact Miss Cleo is not. Who have I been talking to, Tony? Oh. Hold on. What the fuck is going on? Y'all are scaring me. Stop. <laughs> Those fuck. In college. I'm literally tripping. Yeah, stop. Oh my god. I've been talking to some Jamaican lady on the phone. I swear to God. <laughs> are you gonna stop talking to her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm never gonna stop talking to Miss <laughs> Cleo. <laughs> Wow, here he is. Oh my goodness gracious. This is Dillard Butler, my first friend ever. Absolutely incredible. I didn't realize yes. Hunter Biden went by Dillard now. This is frightening. How are you? Doing all right. Thank you for the okay. compliment about and my feet. How, you're welcome. How long have you known William for? God, 36 years. Wow. All right. Have you ever seen his dick or anything like that? It's uncomfortable. Why don't you tell us something about William as a child that we'd be surprised I to I used to show Dillard my penis at what point I time. Wow. Tell us something about William that we'd be surprised to know. We talk with him every week. We never have an inside source like we this. We sort of repeated kindergarten together. That was Ooh, good. Ooh. Wow. William does not seem happy about that information being released <laughs> at all. It was the tea tribe with Miss Henderson. We went to transition. It was always like eight kids in every grade. Dillard and I were in the tea tribe together. They technically called it transition, which was a grade between kindergarten and first grade, but I think wow. I think that was more for the parents. Uh, we were banned from seeing each other by our parents for like two months at one point. Oh, we that's what happens school. when you get caught 69ing as kids. That's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. It's so awkward. That was so awkward. Why did they ban you guys from seeing each other? We, um, for some reason, when we were like 15 or 16, it got to be 16 because we had cars, uh, we sort of found all these old clothes from my grandfather who'd passed away and put pillows in them and put them in the street because William thought it would be funny to put dead bodies in the road. <laughs> and uh, he would, uh, we would just, sca people would get out of their cars and start screaming. <laughs> wow. Look at and, that. Uh, but we did it in front of his uncle's house for some reason. And, of course, we got caught, and yeah. they were really mad. And what do you do? What's your story in life now? Yeah, I live in Charlotte, so, uh -huh. you know. What do you do for work in Charlotte? I do some software account management. It is probably the most boring thing I could talk about on this yeah. stage. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, if you guys come to Charlotte, maybe you can help me. Okay. Well, maybe I will. Whoa. Well, I mean, hopefully you got this is Charlotte. Whoa. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Have you ever thought about doing comedy? Do you have a joke or something you want to do? You seem like a funny I, guy. You have a funny delivery. I'm trying to think. I can tell some more stories about William if you'd like to hear that. You are one of the funniest. I remember people. I remember one time we were we were at, like, Disney World or something on some family vacation, and Dillard was there, and we were rolling around in the grass outside of the hotel, and when we went back inside, we were all blue, and my mother Frances started screaming that we were all going to die, and Dillard was so fucking scared. Dillard totally believed my mom. 
they had us in the bathtub for some reason, trying to make us less blue. Because we were covered in Were you blue. guys in the bathtub at the same time? We were younger. It was okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, is there anything you guys want to share about your uh, friendship? Is there anything you two want to tell each other? Dillard, I love you. Ah. Oh. oh, my goodness gracious. Look at that. You know what? Dillard. I'm going to let you guys take a bath together tonight. How about a hand for Dillard? How about a hand for the great William Montgomery? 